Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Moving objects in a still life image adds a dynamic element to the picture. In this image, the rice is pouring out of the spoon and is captured in mid-air. There are a few techniques that can help in this sort of photography. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so what I've got on this uh, table is just a piece of black card. This will form the base uh, for the image. Then uh, for the actual spoon itself, what I've done is mounted the spoon in a lab stand like this, which allows me to rotate the spoon uh, quite accurately. Now, when this is in position on the table, like so, what this will do is add repeatability. So I'll be able to quite happily repeat the movement time and time again, knowing that once I've set the camera up and it's all in focus and in position, etc., it's not going to change. OK, talking of the camera, as usual, I will be using this full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now this is also capable of controlling the energy in the studio flash I'll be using. Now the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to follow along and see the results as I capture them. OK, so I'll just pop this on the tripod that and we'll line up the shot okay so all I'll do is just zoom that in all the way to the 70 mil end on the lens there we are so with that set what I can do now is just turn the camera on like so and capture one has recognized the camera you can see the settings here so the camera is in full manual mode I uh, have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is flash sync speed for that camera, ISO 100, and at the moment I've set the aperture to f8. That will give me a reasonable depth of field. OK, so with those settings and no flash set, I'll just grab an image just to make sure we don't get any contamination from the house lights. There you go. And you can see from that that it's uh, very dark, so any light that I add will be the only light which affects the image. So to add a light, what I'm going to do is use this uh, Profoto D2. I'm just going to place this about here somewhere. Uh, and I'm just going to use this uh, as it is, with no modifier, uh, and at an arbitrary energy level. So let's just turn that on. And I'll turn on the flash sync trigger. And we'll just grab an image and see what we get. OK, and you can see from this that just by chance, really, just at that energy level, this is pretty well exposed. That's a good starting point. OK, so there's a bit of fine tuning to do. Uh, I just want to make sure this is pointing directly at the uh, spoon. And also, uh, as I rotate this spoon, uh, it will change the way that it catches the light. So if I just turn that through a few degrees, and we'll just grab that again. There, that seems to be OK. Uh, we've got a bit of a shadow here which is showing up, which is actually indicative of a slight problem that we have. Uh, because this has no modifier on it at all, the light is going everywhere. So in order to just make sure that it's all going in the right place, I want a dark background to this image. And as you can see in here, this isn't particularly dark. There's some texture in there. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is put a flag uh, just to the side of this light, just to uh, take down the background. So here I have a piece of cloth on a C-stand, 
and this is going to form uh, the flag. Now in order to tell exactly uh, how this is going to look, I'm just going to turn the modelling light on on this uh, flash head. There we are. Now I can see where the shadow is fallen. So what I want to do is just get this in such a position that it's not covering the spoon, but it is forming a shadow on the background. There we are, we'll see what that's like. Uh, so with that in something like the right position, might need a bit of fine tuning. Let's just grab another image. Okay, so you can see from this that uh, the background has gone dark like I wanted it to. This is what we had before, and this is what I've got now. But I've also caught the edge of the spoon, so I'm just going to need to move this back ever so slightly. And it is really very small movements that can make a huge difference to the way the whole thing looks. Here we are. So just with those tiny little movements, I'll grab that again. There we are, that's much better. So now we've got the full bowl of the spoon. Right, so with that done I can dispense with the modelling light. Don't need that anymore. And we'll do a test with some, uh, some rice in the spoon. So what I will do, straighten up the spoon, and just pour some rice into that. Okay, so first of all I'll do a static test. Uh, so I'll just grab an image, just to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, you can see the rice in here, and it's not too burnt out. Uh, that looks about right to me. One thing about this particular image, uh, if I just uh, zoom in a little, like so, you should be able to see that it's only the far side of the spoon which is actually in focus. Now that I've done on purpose, because as the uh, spoon rotates, it will rotate about this axis. Therefore, the rice will appear um, further away. You'll see what I mean as we uh, give a test. So if I just now turn this ever so slightly, just until it's starting to drop out of the spoon, like so, and we'll grab another static image. And now you can see what I mean. Uh, this is all now coming into focus quite nicely. I zoom in, you can see all the texture in here. Right, so that's it for uh, static images. It's probably time to have a go at doing something dynamic. Now again, in order to help me with that, what I'm going to do is change from single frame drive mode to high speed continuous. Now because I'm using a, a Profoto D2, uh, which is a mains powered studio head, it should be able to keep up with the camera. But we'll see how we go. All right. So what I'll do is just start the shutter and rotate the spoon. go. So we've captured, hopefully, a series of images. And for the most part, it's kept up with it quite nicely. We've got a few blank frames in here, nothing too serious. And here you can see we've captured quite a lot of the rice in, in mid-air, which is the sort of thing that I wanted. Here we are. Yes, they're okay. They're looking all right. Um, I think if I just zoom in, the focus point could do to be ever so slightly further forwards. So what I might do is just repeat that uh, and just change the focus point. So I'll just reset the focus. And we'll grab an image or two, uh, and just recheck that. Okay, so now that's looking a bit sharper along this front edge. 
OK, so I'm just going to uh, reset uh, and we'll have another go. OK, so I've cleaned up all the uh, rice and we're just going to have another sequence. So I'll hold the shutter and just rotate the spoon very slowly. OK, so we can go back through those images and just have a look. These are all looking very good. Uh, I think I particularly like this one. And again, the focus seems to be in the right place now. So all these are nice and sharp, which is what we want. Excellent. OK, so with those now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. But just before I do that, what I'm going to do uh, is just grab a blank slate. So what I'm going to do is very carefully remove the spoon and all the rice uh, and just grab a bare image. That way I can use that if I need to uh, in post-production. And now I'll just grab uh, that as a completely blank background. OK, now we'll go into post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And I've loaded up the three files that I'm taking forwards. So there's this one and a variant, which is this one, uh, and also the blank slate, which is this one. So what I want to do is make a stack of all three of those uh, images. So I'll go to File, come down to Scripts, Then go to Load Files into Stack, add the open files, and just click on OK. There we go. So Photoshop has made me uh, this stack of those images. So this is the uh, top one, then I have this one as a variant, and that is the background. OK. So I think the first thing that I'd like to do uh, is just uh, look at the way that the background is uh, merging with these files. I've got a shadow here from the spoon. Now I can actually get rid of that just by going on to uh, the file which is above it and changing the blend mode from normal to either lighten or lighter colour. Uh, I think I'll go with lighten. There we are. Uh, and now I can do the same with the next image up, which is this one here. So I'll click on there and just take that to lighten as well. So that has now got two spoons uh, so I can merge these two together because I actually uh, prefer the pile of rice down here on this image to the pile of rice on the original image. So if I just turn that one off you can see that there's not very much but the fall here is much better than on this one. So I just need to blend those two together. Uh, so just to make it a little simpler to follow what's going on, I'm just going to move that one to the top of the stack, like so. So with that in place, I'm just going to add a layer mask to that layer, like so. And making sure that black is selected as the foreground color, I'll find a paintbrush and just make that quite a bit bigger something like that, and considerably harder. Yeah, there we are. So now I can paint out like that part of that spoon, revealing the one below it, which is the one that I prefer for this image. I'll just take that along the top of the stem. So, there we are. So now I've got the best of all worlds. I've got the, uh, the spoon that I want and the foreground that I want, uh, which all works very well. 
Okay. So finally, I'll just go to the crop tool and I'm going to use this for video. So I'm using 16 by 9 uh, as a crop. I might just bring it in ever so slightly at the sides. It's just a composition, really, just to find what you're happy with. I think I'm happy with something like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'll click on OK. And there we have it. So by using that particular type of lighting, I've been able to bring out the texture in the spoon and on the rice and also maintain a dark background by the use of the flag. And I think overall that's ended up very well. OK, well I hope you enjoyed watching how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.